Today we're going to be talking about how to pick a niche for your blog. And this is part of the 30 days, 30 day blog. And we are going to be starting with day one fun. And this could help whether you're starting a brand new blog or perhaps you're thinking about going into a different niche in your blog. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few websites and we're going to start with uh, Jennifer Maker. She is a super, super successful blogger who is um, totally killing it. She makes six figures, seven figures blogging. And she does all very niche and she's super, super niche. She does only cry cut, cricket, cricket crafts. Um, she's at jennifermaker.com and she just shows how to do anything on the cricket. Look how cute that rainbow is. How to personalize your shoes with iron on vinyl. And so I would say of everybody that I know that she is absolutely the most niche person. Okay. So now we have spaceships and laser beams. This is more of a general niche blog. This is from my internet friend, Stephanie. And she does, um, she started with party ideas, games, things, baby showers. And then she decided that um, she was going to branch into food. So it doesn't mean if you start one way, and we're going to talk about that a little bit with my blog in a little bit. Uh, it doesn't mean if you start one way that you can't go and have other niches after that, but you want to pick something that you really enjoy. We're going to talk about that a lot more. I wanted to show you a few of the different sites first. Okay, so this is hilarious. I love Jen. She's another internet friend. She's primarily a food blogger, okay? And what she does is recipes, but then she has this whole group of things that um what does she call it she she melts stuff so if she melts crayons she does real well she has a blog post about melting um uh the little hard candies chocolate chip cookies um anything she, and she's hilarious she says if she can melt it she can get um traffic to it so hers is mostly recipes right so this is a functionally a food blog i'm going to close these as i go so that um so that i don't so my internet will go faster okay so this is a friend friend in real life this is lena and she does um make money so how to do extra income she has a ton of free printables which drive a lot of traffic and the funny thing for her is i mean they're not fancy free printables they're just like how to print a rainbow and you can see somebody printing this out and sticking it to their window while everybody's sticking things to their windows um so this is super easy she's she doesn't make it hard she also has a little section on how to uh start a blog so you can do that you'll see a lot of the mom bloggers do that this is a gal i love this is carly and she does um, like work from home, how to give yourself an hour. Now, the funny thing about Carly, this is where we're gonna be thinking about things. She started with pregnancy, birth, and labor and breastfeeding when she was a, sorry about that, when she was a new mom. And that was all her site was about. That is the stuff she gets the most traffic for. And now she's like, okay, I don't have babies anymore. Um, so now she wants to branch into other things. Those aren't as popular right away, but eventually they could become more popular, but she isn't, um, she isn't just abandoning what she did before. She still occasionally writes about that, but she's segueing into something different. Okay. Next is, oh, living well, spending less. This, this lady, um, shoot, her name is Ruth. She does really well. She started her blog because she had to learn to save money and she's a financial blogger. So when we're going to talk about niches or niches, however you want to say it, um, you can do a niche out of anything like hers is a money saving blog. How to eat, how to eat well on the, on a budget, pantry staples, simple changes you can make to save money. So hers is all about not 
finance necessarily, but personal finance, um, more on a smaller level. Brilliant business moms. This lady toad, I love her, Beth Ann. Um, she is, uh, she was kind of about how to make money, but I think she's kind of segued, kind of focused her niche, right? Into Facebook ads now. And she does a lot with that. And she also has a podcast. She interviews people. Um, she has a planner. She does Instagram, things like that. So hers is more business related. And I think a lot of times when people think about having a niche, they think, oh, I have to be a mom blogger. But you can be a business blogger. You can do whatever you want. Now, this lady, Jillian, she has a huge site. Like, this is the largest party site on the Internet. She started it with user-generated content. And what that means is that the people who come to her blog are the ones that help give her ideas. So these are other people taking pictures of their own party, and that gives her all of the content for her blog. And she does very well on Pinterest. We're going to talk about how to market your blog. We're going to talk a little bit about setting up your blog. We're going to talk about lots of things over the next 30 days. But today we're just talking about niche. And so this is my blog. This is my main blog. And what's, what I've started with, and I want to talk to you about this a lot because um, this is super important. When I started, I wanted to do marketing for entrepreneurs. And I did not want to get niched down. And then I was just coming off of my real estate career. So I had written a ton of blog posts about how to, um, my kids are homeschooling now, so you'll see those notifications, um, how to be a realtor, how to do marketing as a realtor, things like that. So that was my very first niche, and it was an accidental niche. And then in, um, so I started that in 2008. I was just trying to get business for my services business. So you can start a blog, not to make money on traffic to your blog, but you can start a blog to get service people. So I know that um, I see Pat was here. Okay, Pat was here. Um, she has a financial services. She's a financial advisor, things like that. So her blog is going to want to focus on ways for her customers to save money, to protect their investments, to do all those things. And now hers is a little bit more complicated because she has to have hers go through a compliance department, which is fine. It's going to take her a little bit longer to get started, right? Because she's going to write a post and then it has to go to compliance. But if she starts writing posts now, what will happen is they're going to build up and she's going to be able to do it. All of us have to start that way. I have like 800 blog posts. I started with one blog post like everybody else is going to do. Um, but when I started my Etsy, that was in 2015, my traffic doubled because I was very specific. It's a very specific niche for Etsy sellers. And most of my traffic honestly comes both to Etsy or to real estate. I do get some for product photography and things like that. But um, a lot of my traffic comes to those two niches, which that has really helped me. All right. Last but not least about picking a niche in my life. This is so interesting. And this is why you should just start. Um, I started this blog, Artsy Fartsy Life, about two years ago um, when my dog nipped a lady. She said he bit her, um, which I guess is true. Um, and so I was a little depressed. And when I'm depressed, I write. So I started writing and I wrote about essential oils because that I took a class about it. And then I just started writing um, blog posts about how to use it for anxiety, how to use it for ADHD, how to do all those things. And then honestly, I let it sit for about a year. Um, I wrote occasionally, oh, I wrote some posts about like um, how to dress yourself as a woman over 50. I wrote some posts about, oh, I wrote about um, our um, adoption story. And it was truly a general blog. And then 
um, my mom, who has dementia, moved in, my mother-in-law, and I started writing caregiver posts. And so uh, these get the most traffic from Pinterest to my site, and Pinterest is my highest traffic source. And so I, um, I get the most traffic to these just far and away. Um, and that's fine. It, but it's a little part of my site over here, my family part. And then I decided I was going to take this seriously. I was going to take this website seriously and really try to grow it. And I had a friend say, well, why don't you just make it a dementia site? And for me, that isn't, um, it's really the stories that I hear and the questions people have, they're just so sad. And that's not something that, like, I don't mind them. I'm more than happy to answer any of their questions, but I don't want to build my whole fun site on something that's just not that fun. So I decided to start doing um, crafts, which I started with journaling, okay? Okay. And um, so I do uh, magazine journal pages, and that's fun. I get traffic to that. And then finally, I wound up with adult crafts where I kind of do, I would say more so I do um, painted crafts, decoupage crafts, things like that. And that's what I like doing. I even have a project sitting over there that I'm going to be doing that should be super fun. But if you'd asked me the day that I started my blog what I wanted it to be about, I would have said maybe adoption, maybe um, essential oils, maybe things like that. So what you need to do is, and this is the best way to do it, you need to, for a week or for today, if you want to stay on the 30 days, um, but for a period of time, Write down everything you like to do, okay? So if I were to pick things, I like to paint. I like to cut up magazines. I like to sell on Etsy. I like old things. So I have a vintage Etsy store. I have a really cool creative sign over my head and an old rodeo pointy guy. Um, I like dogs. My dogs are here. Um, I like cats. I like, I don't like cooking. So I would never have a, um, blog where it was cooking based. I did think maybe I could do some, um, cocktails cause I do like cocktails, but come to find out I don't like doing that either. And that's fine. What you're going to do is you, I would pick three things to start with. Okay. I know a lot of people say, Jennifer Maker says, pick one thing to start with. But for me, if I had picked one thing to start with and stayed with it, first off, I wouldn't have liked my blog as much because then I would have just been stuck with um, essential oils, which I like essential oils, um, but not that much. And I would have then maybe gone to dementia. And I don't mind writing about that, especially when something comes up that I really think I could help other people with. I don't mind writing about that. But what my real love turns out to be is to make these crafts. And so you want your, you want to have not a general blog, everything, you know, you don't want to write about what you had for lunch. You don't want to write about what your kids are doing. Nobody cares. You want to write about something specific that you can help other people with. Um, but I don't think you have to pick just one thing, especially if you're just starting, 